Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Fight. I'm Chris, and it is National Preparedness Month. Uh, week one. Well, maybe it's week two. Like It's Sunday, so... I don't know, however that works. Um, and so I'm doing, like I do every year, a few things to help prepare myself specifically for winter. Because it seems like the right thing to do this time of year. I'm in Michigan. We get... Um, although our winters have been pretty mild the last few years, last several years even, this kind of summer has been pretty crazy. A lot of flooding, a lot of extreme heat. We've been going back and forth between like super dry, super wet. And we had snow, like late, late spring. It's just it's been crazy. So who knows what winter is going to bring. A lot of people suspect that we're going to have an early winter even. And uh, I have a really close friend who's going to be doing a lot of driving. And she's really new, relatively new to the state from someplace that doesn't get any snow. And uh, she's going to be doing a lot of driving in an area where there's not a whole lot of help. If her car breaks down, if she spin out and crashes or gets stuck in a ditch or something, she may very well be stuck there for a while. And it might be a little too far to walk. If injured, if it gets really cold, if the snow is a foot deep. That might not be doable. And so I've been wanting to get something, not only for myself, but specifically for her, to help keep her warm in a broken down car. Most, not so much like a running it to keep warm, like a heating source, but something to heat up some water, heat up a can of soup. You can keep your insides warm, then your outsides stay warm too, generally. I mean, it's a really good way to fend off hypothermia. If you can keep sipping on something warm, you probably won't get hypothermia. You'll be all right. You might not be comfortable, but you'll be all right. So, I'm going to talk about some solutions that I come up with, some options, and I'm also going to do a little bit of an experiment because the solution I came up with, I'm not 100% confident in. So, like and subscribe, stay tuned, and uh, you can watch my experiment and the other things I'm going to be doing. Hopefully this will be a weekly series of things that I'm packing in the car for winter. Did I say like and subscribe? Do that. All right, so let's get started. A stove is what I'm talking about. You want to get a stove. There's a lot of different options for stoves. There's the camp stoves that use these little canisters of heat. These are awesome for camping. You know, a lot of backpackers and campers, hikers, whatever, you use these. The stoves themselves are very small and lightweight. This will often fit. They come in a few different sizes, so you can get one that will fit in the cup and like an all-little canister together. And you have your stove, your fuel source, and your cooking pot all in one unit. And that's great. However, I want something that I can store in the car in potentially extreme cold. Realistically, our extreme cold isn't extreme as some other places like northern Wisconsin and Minnesota and stuff get colder than we do. The UP of Michigan, we're down in the southern part of Michigan. It's not that bad, but it's below freezing temperatures. It is very, very normal um, in winter for us. Like, I would say getting even below zero is not uncommon. So, you know, with, you know not without the wind chill, like just like the true temperature, it's not uncommon. So it needs to be something that will be stable. And ideally, in case we do get some hot weather, in case I forget about it in spring and don't take it out in the summer, I also don't want it to explode and blow up and become a bomb uh, in, in a hot car either. So even though these cans are great for hiking, it says right on here, danger! Contents may catch fire. Container may explode if heated. Do not smoke. Do not puncture. Do not burn. Keep out of reach of children. Use only in a well-ventilated area. Keep away from flames such as pilot lights and any objects that sparks such as an electric motor. Store away from heat. Do not expose to heat or store at temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid prolonged exposure to sunlight. Do not enclose the canister with any windscreen. Do not refill canister. Inhalation can cause central nervous system effects. Failure to follow all warnings and instructions for canister and application can result in death, serious burns, or property damage. That's a lot of dangers, a lot of warnings. 
That does not make me feel safe driving anywhere with this in my car. Certainly not storing it. Now, in your backpack, actually, it's fine. Because in your backpack, it shouldn't be above 120 degrees Fahrenheit, probably. I guess it depends on where you live. I'm not hiking in that type of temperatures. No way. It's probably not getting direct sunlight. It's, you know, you probably don't have flames in your backpack. Probably no motors. You might have some batteries or something. you got flashlights and whatnot. Probably perfectly safe in a backpack. In a car? Absolutely not. One of these guys. I have a lot of these. Uh, but basically the same deal. Danger, extremely flammable gas. Keep away from heat, spark of flame, no smoking, eliminate all ignition sources if safe to do so. Um, blah, 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 blah. Do not expose to temperatures above 100 degrees, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not put on trains or passenger aircraft. Protect from sunlight, store in well-ventilated place. It also says in here, um, handling and storage. Uh, keep away from heat spread flames and smoking. Never store at temperatures above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Never store in living spaces. So these bad boys, you're not even supposed to keep in living spaces. I, I have a bunch of these. I don't keep them in my house. Actually, this one I forgot about and it was in the house. So one was kept in the house that I forgot about. Um, but you're not even supposed to keep these things in your house, in your living space. That can't go, That I can't throw this in my car. There's, there's no way I'm throwing this in my car, in my friend's car, or anybody's car. I don't even keep it in my house. I keep them in a tub outside, away from the house. Although right next to the barbecue pit. <laughs> So what's the solution? There's also twig stoves. I have a twig stove. I also have one of those little tablet esbit stoves. They are super tiny and small. Um, the esbit stove and the twig stove, they were packed up. I didn't feel, actually, I don't know where the esbit stove is. I don't use it. I didn't like it. I liked how tiny it was. But when I did a test run on it, that fire, it just wasn't hot enough. With the, even a little bit of wind was causing a lot of problems. And the little fuel tablets, um, there's so many danger warnings. Like, you're not even supposed to let those touch your skin. And you don't let children handle them. I've got a child. My friend has three children. Um, and we've got dogs. That's no good. Uh, the twig stoves work really well. But my experience is that when you use them in winter, I did a test run in winter. There was a ton of snow on the ground. Things were kind of wet. Trying to collect sticks and twigs in those conditions and using that twig stove wasn't great. It worked. It did work, but it seemed like we needed a lot of sticks, a lot of little twigs to keep it going. It was hard finding stuff that was dry. Um, and plus, I don't really want that type of flame inside or next to a car. I want something that can be more contained, more safe, more stable. And so, what someone recommended to me, you know, I've been researching this online, um, just looking in camping stores, asking people who work in these camping stores, other hikers and backpackers and whatnot. And something that was recommended was Sterno. Now, I have used these, I used to be, I used to work in, you know, restaurants and things like that, do some catering as most people do when they're young. And I've used these before. They're cool. They're fun. Um, when my little cousin was little, we went to the drive-in movie theater, got one of these, and roasted marshmallows with it. It was fun. I wasn't sure how safe that was, but we did it. It was fun. We did it, like, right outside the car. So put that down. We're watching movies, had our little camp chairs, and roasted some marshmallows. I have no idea if that's the rules or not, but that's what we did. And that was fun. It was great. And these feel very safe. Additionally... It says it is green. I don't remember that them always being green, but they are now. It says uh, safe and easy to use, burns clean, odor free. Um, it says contains ethyl alcohol, may emit flammable and harmful fumes, avoid inhalation. Use only in well ventilated area, keep away from heat, sparks and open flames, no smoking, is swallowed, call a poison control center, blah, blah, blah. It's not under pressure. It doesn't say anything about storing in less than 150 degrees or 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep away from heat sparks and open flames. Okay. It may emit 
flammable and harmful fumes. These are used indoors all the time. To my knowledge, that's their original purpose, is to keep, food, it's like a warming thing, to keep food warm at um, weddings and different catering events. You have like the buffet type of things. Let me grab this real quick. <laughs> this is not used for food, but you know, you have like something like this and they have a little holder and you sit that on there and you put some water in this and then you put your pen in that and it keeps the food nice and warm um, for hours while people can have that little buffet thing going on. And that, that's the use case for it. So these can definitely be used indoors. Um, it says nothing about storing in temperature. There's a, so there's this kind, there's a few different versions. They come in different sizes with different burn times. This one's four and a half hours. This top looks like this, where you have to use something to pry it off, kind of like a paint can. They also have this camping green wick version. I've never used this version before. I don't know what that's really about, but it says eco-friendly formula, high heat output with power pad technology. Don't know what that means. Can stays cool to the touch. Always place cans in designated holder or tray before lighting. Use upright on level surface. Do not burn unattended or near combustible materials. Never touch a burning can. To open, turn counterclockwise to securely close. Turn cap clockwise firmly. Keep can tightly sealed when not used. To extinguish, use cap and snuffer. It says nothing, again, on this version about not storing it in an enclosed Space, keeping it with, but he does just keep out of the reach of children. He does keep everything out of reach of children. But it's not under pressure. It's not, it seems to be stable. And they are safe to use indoors, I know that. And it's green, clean burning, biodegradable. This seems like a good choice to me so far. So, not only to buy a few of these, but there's also this that is available. Take a look at this guy. This is a stove that you can purchase. You know, it's like that. Look at that. Look at that price. $9.99. This was not hard to find. Went to the local sporting goods store, Dunham's. $9.99. Folds nice and flat, fits in this box. And look how sturdy this is. It's got a little door. So open that up. Take your can, and it out. It can fit a few different sizes in there. You can also, I don't see why you couldn't use just like if you already have an alcohol stove, I don't see why you couldn't use it for this. I've been also told that you can refill these once they've been used up with alcohol and use it as an alcohol stove. Close that up. There you go. And this bad boy is sturdy. I've got a, if I can even lift it. Ugh. This is cast iron. It's fine. It's not shaky. Get it centered good. So, like, I would have no problem. I mean, I would have a problem. There's no way that this thing's going to heat up cast iron enough to actually cook. But I've got even a lid in there. <laughs> this thing is not light. I was struggling to pick it up. And it's holding it up just fine. I like this so far. It's completely enclosed. There is a little opening here. And it's got an opening on top. But when I see it completely enclosed, it is, I can't see wind being a problem here. It's going to be shielded from any wind. You've got a nice sturdy base. So far, so good. Now, the potential issue is that this one's liquid. Some of these are gels. What happens when it freezes? Because like I said, we get, we get freezing temperatures here. If I'm storing this in the car and it freezes overnight or whatever, is it still going to work? Is it still going to light? Good question. This little container here. <laughs> I am concerned about leaks with this sort of thing. I put one in the freezer. It's been in the freezer for about... It's still, it's still liquid. I can hear the liquid slushing or, or maybe it's... That's definitely liquid. Eh, this might be a gel at this point. I'm not sure. 
it's not a it's not a solid block of ice. That's that's for sure. Um, but this has been in the freezer for like. See, it's Sunday. I put it in on Friday, I think. So, about two days, day and a half, something like that. I also melted wax on here because I wanted to be sure it didn't leak. Because even though I don't think leaking would be detrimental, like I said, it's, it's biodegradable, it's clean burning, so I think it'd be fairly safe. But if it leaks, then you're you lost your fuel source, and then you know you've got a mess, and whatever it's leaked onto is now pretty flammable, right? And it does say that may be combustible, combustible if absorbed in paper or cloth. So if it spills into the car seats, if it spills onto your maps or clothes, whatever, all that stuff's not flammable. So I don't really want this leaking if I can help it. Uh, so I got this container. This is called uh, Sistema. This is only $5. These, I don't know if they're completely waterproof, but they are, they're pretty solid. I use these type of containers for the lunches and all that. So, I melt the wax on there to try to prevent some le any leaks and whatnot. I froze it. Let's see what happens. Can I open this with the wax on there? How difficult is that going to be? Will it light after freezing? Will it boil a cup of water? Let's find out. All right, so I don't have the grip to do that. But if you're in your car, you've got keys. <laughs> and I don't like putting keys online because people can, uh, you could actually, like, I never show my actual house or car keys online because you can actually, um, you know, freeze frame, copy this, get a copy of your keys. So be careful what you're putting online, folks. This, this is not my house key. This is not my car key. So you get that, you know, still can't get in the house, can't steal my car, whatever. Don't care. So, but if you're in your car driving, you probably have your keys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this to scrape some of this wax off. Now, honestly, I don't feel like this wax was necessary, but I wanted to conduct this experiment just to see like i don't i'm not convinced that this would have leaked and if it did it was, it's the plan is for it to be in that container but i wanted to see how hard it would be to remove frozen wax and open this up and like would it work just using keys she does often have a knife with her but i don't know that i'd want to use a knife on this and dull my dull my blade on something like that all right Let's see if i can open it now Oh man, that's tricky. There you go. Got it, though. Just have to work it a little bit. Do that before you get too cold and weak. Oh, it does have like a wick. Ah, it's got an actual wick here. Okay. I don't think the other ones have that. Maybe that's what that power pad they were talking about is. I feel like that makes it a little easier. So I'm gonna try the little matches first. And they got bigger matches and also got a lighter over here. Let's see. This one. There you go. Maybe that one. So it is liquidish. Liquidish. Not completely frozen solid. I got the fan on. <laughs> Gee. Fan's not blowing that much, is it? Apparently it is. But, you know, that's life. Obnoxious. Alright. Where's the lighter? Yeah. Alright, so I would, you're gonna have to shield it from the wind, it seems. And it caught. 
I don't know if you guys can see that flame, but there is a small blue flame. I feel like I gotta protect it a little bit. At least until it gets a little stronger. Maybe it melts a little bit more. See that? We're going. We're going. It's cooking. All right. All right. I didn't really think about order of operations here. It made sense to put it in the stove first or light it first, but uh, whatever. Here we are. latch here so you can secure that door closed and then I've got a little cooking pot this is one of those just really thin I forget who makes this it's probably the off-brand because I don't see any markings on what it is but you know just one of those really lightweight cups that um, water bottle fit in really nice just nest in there and so that's the kind of setup I usually have. Let's get some water. That flame's doing all right there. Fill her up. And, oh, I should set it. Alexa, start stopwatch. Oh, she doesn't have a stopwatch function. Well, let's just see what happens. So we're at, so far, this is a 21 minute long video. I didn't intend for it to be this long. So that was cold water. Well, I shouldn't say cold, but it was, um, it was just tap water. So just whatever, whatever just comes off the tap. And it has been sitting here for as long as it's been taking me to do this. Fire's still going. Fire's still going. So while we're waiting on that, woo, that thing's heavy. Um, let me, maybe I'll move this over here, how to keep an eye on it, and I'll show you how this stove now I would like this to get to boiling oh, hummingbird so cute, I planted some hummingbird I'm not going to show you guys because oh, look at it um I planted some hummingbird attracting plants out there and it's been working. Like I don't have a hummingbird feeder out, but I've been getting hummingbirds. They like that flower. Um, so yeah, I would like this to get to a boil. Um, do I feel any radiant heat from it? Not really. Uh, if, I, if I put my hands close. If I put my hands on right here, I get a little bit of heat. So I don't know how well this is going to work to like help keep me warm. It's probably better than nothing. So far, this, like as a unit, is not very hot. We'll come back to that, see how it does in a bit. The, the canister down here, and touching this part, that still feels like it just came out of the freezer. It's still cold. Water is not, it's still cool. All right. We'll give it a couple minutes and come back to it. All right, so in the meantime, I'll show you how this stove comes together, how it works. I don't, there's a couple of different versions of this. I believe Sterno used to make their own like name brand version. I wasn't able to find that one. Uh, but this is, I don't know how you say that, Coughlin's? Coughlin's? I don't know. That, it's very harsh, that G and H there. Um, $9.99. That seemed pretty typical. I did see some variants. I think the most expensive I saw was like maybe $15 or $20. I did see maybe a little bit cheaper, 
but local store, no shipping or anything, easy returns. So I prefer, if possible, to just get it from a brick and mortar store if I can. It comes just in a little plastic bag. There's no instructions with it, but at the same time, you shouldn't need any. It's um, it's pretty easy to put together. Uh, just real quick, says used by campers, backpackers, and outdoors people for emergency and survival situations. Built for Coughlin's camp heat cans, but also works with many types of canned fuel or artificial solid fuel, i.e. hexamine tabs. It's a coated steel construction, strong enough to hold a heavy pot. Because that is true, we just saw that. Front door and sides protect flame from wind. I've got the fan going on. You saw I was having a little difficulty with the matches. Um, so there's a little bit of air movement, not a ton, but that fire's going just fine. And the size is six and a half, six and a half, six and a half <laughs> inches wide by six and a half inches deep and five and a, five inches tall. Or if you prefer metric, 16.5 centimeters, 16.5 centimeters and 12.75. Why did I say 75? Centimeters tall. And this also can expose you to chemicals including chromium, which is known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects. So there you go. So that's how this comes out the package. And all you have to do, folks, this will be really easy, is you just gotta open it up. Open it up. Like so. And then you'll see there's like a little um kind of like can you see that there's like a like a hooking tab there and another one on this side and on this bit you've got you've got a slot on either side so all you have to do is hook that tab into the slot and do the same thing on this side just kind of And that's it. <laughs> that's, it's that easy. And then your door, it just, there's a little latch right there. You can open it. See that little latch right there? And you close it. Just kind of hook it on. And there you go. And your stove is assembled and solid. I would say, as far as uh, stoves go, camping stoves and whatnot, this was probably the most intuitive. This is much easier to put together my, than my twig stove. And um, let's see, for my stove that goes with, with this guy. Um, well, that one doesn't really, with this guy, that doesn't really require any assembly. So I guess that's not the same. Um, but compared to the twig stove, this is this is easier and quicker compared to my esbit the esbit's quicker admittedly but it's also much smaller and not nearly as sturdy so but still even if it's that you gotta admit that was pretty easy to do pretty intuitive no instructions necessary and then to undo it just yeah pop it apart okay. Folding it back up apparently is more difficult. There we go. Just gotta stack them in the right order, I guess. Maybe that way. I don't know how it goes back. I guess that's the tricky part. There's always something. There's always a catch. Why doesn't that part sit flat? Well, now I'm going to go back and watch the video myself to see. I feel like it was not, it was flatter than that, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. 
whatever. We'll show you that it will fit in this package bag still. So, so it seemed like it was flatter than that. Maybe it wasn't. Even if I don't have it right, it fits back in the box. It takes up like no space. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we're at 30 minutes now. Wow, this video is longer than I expected. Oh, that water's hot. That water's hot. It's not boiling. It's not even about to boil. But it's hot enough where if this were soup, I would definitely eat that as soup. I would use this. That's hot enough for me for like some hot cocoa. For tea, you probably want to go hotter. If you're making a, um, what do you call those? Like a mountain house, you might want to go a little hotter. But when did I start that? I have to go back and check. I'm going to go back and watch it. This part is still, the can itself is still cool, for sure. This, I can feel some warmth, but I can definitely, my hands are on here and it's fine. I can touch this. This is not going to melt anything. This isn't going to burn me if I accidentally touch it. Um, it's fine. It's been going for a few, few minutes here. And so this has a, what does it say? I think it was six hours. Six hour burn time. I think I'm happy with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is my solution. I'm gonna store it in this guy. Like that. And put some matches and a lighter in here. Some emergency blankets. I'm not going to put food in here. I don't want to store this with food. I don't want to store it with anything that, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't want to put a lighter in. I mean, a lighter's not going to, it's not going to strike itself. Um, but I'm definitely going to put it in here with some matches. These strike on box matches, or sorry, these long matches would probably be a little bit better. Um, that should negate any leaking or problems of gases escaping. I'm going to call this a win. This is one element of what I think you should keep in your car, what I plan to keep in my car in case there's a breakdown and I'm stuck. You hear about it every winter. Some family or somebody is stuck in their car overnight or for a couple of days. And sometimes the people survive, sometimes they don't. And I feel like this is one of those things that can make the difference between you surviving or not. So I'm going to add more things to this kit. This is one element of it, a way to heat up some water, heat up a can of soup. Yeah, this is like, oh, some ramen. That's, that's fine, I think, for some ramen. I don't need to burn them up. You can, you can see, you can see some smoke coming out of there. Can you see it? I can see it. Not smoke, steam, whatever, water vapor. It's not to that boil point, but this is hot. That's hot water. It's slower than what I would like, admittedly. But you're stuck in your car. What else are you going to do? Sit there and wait for it to get warm. And this is probably giving you some heat. Just a little, not a ton. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call this a win. One last day to test. is putting the fire out. So I'm going to turn this around. We say you're supposed to use the cat to snuff the flame. And, uh, let's see if I can do that. I don't think I can do it with it in there. <laughs> so it looks like i got to take it out. There you go. It is snuffed. Got a pool of wax sitting on top. <laughs> I don't know that the wax is necessary, to be honest. I really don't. I don't think that it is. I'm not sure that I'm concerned about this leaking, especially if it's in this container 
when you store it upright. I don't know that that's a problem. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put... I'm just going to let this wax pour off. There you go. So it looks like that power pad that they advertise looks like it's an actual pad on top. It's a little bit hot. Probably shouldn't touch that. And um, I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it... That's just, there you go. That's what that is. So, yeah, it feels like liquid in there still. You got this little pad and this wick. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, actually, let's, let's relight it. We've got to experiment, experiment all the way, right? I've probably had some of these that were already open, but who cares? And then that lit right back up, no problem. I think this is a winner. I'm going to go with this. If you know something about these sterno cans that I don't know as far as like a reason why I should not keep this in a car specifically during the winter summer mm, I'll think about it keep doing research but I haven't found anything yet from the manufacturer or any reputable source saying that it should not be kept in the car in summer in fact, I've heard on Reddit and various forums and stuff that people do, in fact, do that, and it's fine. With the occasional leaking, if you just throw it willy-nilly. This video is by far long enough, probably too long for what it is. But hopefully you enjoyed it, and it gives you some ideas and things that you can do to be safer this winter and be better prepared for emergencies. And um, I'm going to call this a success. I probably not bothered with putting more wax on, except for maybe this one to help seal it since it's been opened already. And, uh, or maybe I'll keep experimenting with this one. Maybe I'll give this a couple months and see, open it up, see if it's like all evaporated, if it's still usable. That might be good. See you guys in six months. See what this one's at. But otherwise, um, I'm gonna call this a success and uh, I'm happy with the way this worked out. With my nice warm cup of water here. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in the next video.